All right, so hello everyone. <clears throat> uh, just a forewarning, um, this video will contain me doing the, uh, the beginning of the Ching, the Ching Hun uh, story quest. So if you don't want spoilers on that, if you're really interested in that area, or you're coming to that area and you just want to, you want to, you know, take part in the story, uh, uh, there's spoilers for it. So, but other than that, I want to give my review on uh, Lost Ark before I reach the end game. So, um, so I'll be honest with you. At first, going into this, I was, I was, I was, I was anticipating it. And I was a little excited, but I was also a little skeptical because of, um, so a lot of MMOs they 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 entice me and I play them and I'm like, I don't, I'm not really, I don't, I'm not really feeling it. So, but this one, I really, I'm, it, it really enticed me because, to be honest with you, I'm a really big fan of Diablo. I thought Path of Exile was great. And so seeing this really enticed me into the game and I'm glad I stuck around and I'll delve into that here in a bit, but I, I'm glad I stuck around and played because when this game, when this game is playing to its strengths, this game is, is some of the most fun I've had in a game in a very long time. And it literally is so much fun that I'd rather play a lot of other games that I typically would be playing. In the current state of things, than most I'd rather be playing this what you here? because it's just ju it's just genuinely so much fun, and you don't realize you're getting addicted to it until it's too late, and you're already just playing it every single day, and you're doing every single thing you can do, uh, all the time, no matter what. I just find it to be a lot of fun, and it's it's just it's it really bl it's really blown me away. Now, um. I've had my friend, for example. I really think he would enjoy this game if you give it a shot. But I, I do understand a lot of people are turned off by the that have never played them. This isometric field of view where you're clicking on movement, you're clicking to move around, you're doing this, that, and and I get it. It is a, it is a bit of a turn off. It is a, I I get why a lot of people prefer the newer art style. And to be honest with you, I, when I first started playing isometric games, I also thought the same thing. But after playing them and like playing this one. It's 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 really it's not bad at all, and in fact, a lot of times, yeah, I feel like it's a lot easier. You're, you're a lot more relaxed while doing it because you don't have to you don't have to use both your hands really like all the time. Is my best is my best take on it. And you can basically just really relax and just enjoy the game you're playing. Now, um, let's uh let's just talk about the classes first uh, before we delve in like as for the full review. I have personally played. Uh, I originally made a martial artist before I made my other character that I swapped and then I swapped to this one The martial artist felt good. I get the idea of what people are going for I just feel like if you're going for a starter class I don't know that's necessarily the best one to start with but that's all, that's all in your like personal preference and what you'd like to do in games um, If you're really lo like looking at PvP strikers really good at PvP right now. I've heard uh, in the uh, What's it called? I don't remember what it's called, but the striker is very good right now in PvP. Um, and then I enjoyed that for a little bit. I finished the, the prologue with it and I was like, eh. And then I swapped to the Berserker and then I really started to invest in the game. Now, I'll be honest with you. Don't be afraid to swap classes in this game if you've invested time in the class. I'll be, I'll be real with you. It's It doesn't take long to do any of it. I... Played the Berserker for a while and I was looking at Sharpshooter because I wanted to try something different and everybody was playing Berserker and, I, and so I got the kind of idea what, I, what the Berserker was doing and everybody was doing it. So I wanted to try something different than what everybody else was doing. So I played the Sharpshooter. I caught up to my Berserker in one day and surpassed him. Um, so it's not hard to level. And I feel like that, that that's one of the strengths of this game is that you don't have to commit extreme, extremely hard to level your characters in this game. In fact, once you get level 50, you can just boost another character to 50, and then I think another character after that. You're the one who you have of lots of ways to level, and, and to be honest, the leveling isn't really the strongest part of this game. If you're leveling for the first time, I feel like the parts you're going to enjoy the most are uh, the dungeons. Uh, either doing them solo or the group, where the mobs are plentiful and you get to rip and tear through bosses and mobs you'll enjoy the game because that's when it's playing to what the game is best at and 
Uh, if you're before, if you're if you haven't reached level thirty yet, and you're really on the fence about the game, I highly recommend uh, to at least play to Boria and do the Boria quest line. It's a main story quest. It's in Lutera. When you get to that point, trust me. If you don't like it after that, I completely understand. But everything that everything near the end of when the Lutera quest line is coming to an end and coming to a close. It is great, and that will. If it doesn't sell you on the game, I understand. Now, what we can talk about is this: uh, if you're really a guy for builds, trying out different things, trying to do, you know, theory craft and do a whole bunch, there are countless skills in this game, and I know there's even more when you get to late game. I've already know about this. You get like a, you get ultimates and such, but you get all these skills, different skills for every class, obviously. And you get skill points. Take these skill points and you invest them into these, into these these trees here. Now, obviously, they all do different things. For example, on rapid shot here, uh, you get amplified. You can have you can either have amplified damage. You can reduce the MP cost, or you can automatically turn to the nearest frontal foe in a 90 degree angle and fire. So you you, you have a lot of options here. Now, then you get to the little bit of the more altering ones. You get into the the green here, and you get like double shot where you fire two shots simultaneously, and it increases your outgoing damage. Um, then you have lightning arrows that'll turn your element, you turn your arrows into lightning, and inflict them with shock and damage them over time as well. And then you get like you get increased movement speed after this after skill use. And then every skill seems to have this. I don't know if the alts do, but they have these golden tiers, the tier three, which really changes. How the skill would generally play it feels uh final strike uh empowers the final strike attack when an attack widens by uh 20 and crit rate is plus 100 and then or you can choose this one increase the amount of arrows from three to five now this one is not as a as as a stream but for example um the best example i have of actually gameplay altering is here blade storm uh blade storm uh when you first start the game is a is a very high damaging ability but you have to sit in you can't sit, you can't move uh you have to sit still uh and that you know kind of sucks because the uh sharpshooter here is not very good at close range well they are good at close range but they're very squishy so you want to play more to your strength and then you get all you get all these you can go to here but then when you get to the tier threes you get stuff like shadow dance where you can move after spinning twice and then it leaves the thing behind so you can get out of the area of effect and then you have my preferred one blade dance which lengthens the spinning attack and enables you to move during it and it will repeat the last uh stronger hitting attack twice so it creates more of a a a like play around you know you can avoid your aoe and then go in for the final burst of damage and then get out this is really important to the gameplay and it changes everything you do you can make entire builds based off what you want to do how you want to do it and obviously there's gonna be meta builds but you don't always have to follow those now as for pvp you may be asking yourself that's great but i love to play pvp i want to invest the time in pvp well this that, that is great because there's this thing here called the book of coordination now i'm not quite sure what exact level this unlocks and you see i have, I have like not invested any of these uh you know skill points here up 306 you can use 340 i guess uh and you can get any of this so at the level you unlock the ability to go into the pvp zone you are immediately on level and on par with the people that have played the game for a long time now you're not you're not like skill wise but like actually like what you have at your at your hands here so you have a stat points you can invest in crit specialization domination swiftness endurance and expertise you get a thousand points you, everybody has everybody gets a thousand points nobody has more nobody has less everybody has a thousand points if they choose to invest less i don't even know if you're allowed to start the game with less but you also get every single skill in the game for your class and you can you know proceed to uh equip every skill that you want to equip and you know be on par so you're never behind you can always um be playing at equal par level with everybody else now i haven't got to the guardian raid so i'm not going to go into this because i don't know what this is yet but gear gear is plentiful uh it gets even more plentiful whenever you get to end game i've heard so uh yeah 
Um, there's a lot of stuff that uh, is in this game that is just blowing me away. It's crazy. Now, there's also a lot of features in this game that you don't need to necessarily invest in. For example, if you play a lot uh, and you care about the card effects, that's fine. Uh, if you don't care about the card effects, also fine. Uh, from what the way it seems, these are not really going to affect you too, too much. Uh, you can see I'm only I'm taking 8% less earth damage. Uh, well, actually 16% less earth damage. And I do 100% more to lucky monsters. I don't even know what a lucky monster is, to be honest with you. Um, they're not going to affect you too, too much. And to be honest with you, if you don't care about the cards, it's fine. It's not going to change how much you play the game. Uh, you, if you're going to min-max, this becomes probably a lot more important when you're going for min-maxing and, and like reaching the pinnacle of everything you can get to. Secondly, uh, if you like earning things, there are plenty of titles with different ways to earn them. And uh, they are endless. Uh, no, well, not endless, but obviously like you can mix and match titles so you can be, you could be like, I don't know. Uh, you could be the primal uh, musician, and it'll be your character's name. If you like earning titles, there's a little bit of a you know thing to earn there. Um, what else? There's trade skills. Uh, these level up differently. Uh, you will reach them at a certain point in the game. I think it's uh, lake. It's like something. I forget what it's called like something. I don't remember exactly. It's in Lute It's in the Lutera quest line. It's when you meet Thyrain. In that place, you will you will get your uh, trade skills. Um, these these play a port an important part in the stronghold, which I will show you shortly. They play an important part in that, and they seem to be you know pretty simple. You've got you've obviously got uh, you got energy for it. Never really burned out of energy. You have to do a lot of this stuff to do it, and you know if, if this is what you like to do. This. This game has got you covered. There are materials to mine, and they have a purpose. They're not just like, you know, they're not just useless after a certain level. There is sailing. Um, I'm not going to do it right now, but you will get a ship after a certain point in the game, and you can sail around, go to different islands, explore. The game actually encourages you to explore the world and see things, and then you get to, you know, you know, develop your character even more, I guess is what I want to say. Now... You may be asking yourself, well, I don't know. I'm still not sold yet. That's fine. You, honestly, you have to give this game a chance. If you're not going to give it a chance, I can't persuade you anyways. But I will tell you this. The game does have some pay to win elements. Not even some. The game is pay to win. Uh, and I know that's a turnoff for a lot of people, but you need to look at it first. From what I've heard, you don't have to do it. It just increases the speed at which you will progress the end game. At level 50, you pay to pay to win. You don't. You won't like. You won't just like go straight straight there. But you, it'll really. Exp it, it'll it like. It'll it extremely increase the, the speed at which you get there. Um, but from how it seems, you know, you got the shop and everything in the shop does not bother me. A lot of it's skins. Um. But this is really we get there a lot, a lot of their money. These skins, they get, they got mounts and pets in here for people. You know, that's what you want. You got all sorts of little things, for, you know, running around. You get, you get skin, you got boat skins, you get stuff for in your stronghold, which takes me to the stronghold. Let me just go ahead and play that for you real quick. And you can obviously name this whatever you want. And this is a customizable player home here. Um, so, here's the stronghold. Uh, we'll go ahead and just go into strong, like the, the management view. This is the stronghold. You can build anything. You unlock different areas to build more stuff. Uh, and they give you different effects. Like the manor here giving me, you know, research action energy exemption is minus 1%. There's more to unlock, places to unlock. Uh, this is where you go. This is where you like. You can do micromanagement things. Uh, you can dispatch people on missions uh, for your like the, your crew on missions. You can craft things. You want HP potions, bombs, battle items, 
etc etc there's more things there's stuff that you can build here there's structures you can build so if you want to add more things into your into your um house you can do that now there's also a research center which is going to expand the world that you're able to do things in for example you this is why you need to do your it's, it's recommend i at least recommend that you do your uh trade skills because you need them for this this is how you progress them uh we'll go ahead and research this one you just click you you have the materials you pay you pay sil silver and then you know you, you need energy and then you just you hit research and you just goes and then and in 59 minutes and 38 seconds the game will alert me in the top left corner at this little uh this little house icon to tell me hey your research is done and it'll tell me hey by the way your dispatch is done and then you can come back here to no effect you know you'll be fine and just go ahead and affect that and you know mess with that and start up again if you want to do that again uh, some people aren't some people are going to do this some people aren't i don't really think it matters if you do or you don't but there are a lot of options here so don't just don't just get held back by not you know using your stronghold there are merchants wow. that come and they'll give you different things different things to build and buy here like this one you can craft the structure the earth tree branch that's what you want to do you can do that you could exchange your, your raid seals and buy that but personally this is not something i get too invested in and so we're gonna go ahead and, and play the song of escape and it'll take you exactly back to where you start where you where you casted uh you know your i mean you you played to go into your stronghold now now um how you may be asking yourself after that but i still i'm still like you know maybe you're still dependent on what class you want to play and such i'll be honest with you all of them seem to play quite differently from one another uh and the good thing is this game doesn't limit you uh on trying so there's three there's generally about three classes for each some classes have none some classes have two it's weird it's a whole thing there's gender locked it's not bad it trust me it's fine you don't want to play a certain gender you don't have to if you, if you or if you just if you're not biased it doesn't matter it's fine there's more classes that are going to come out that are on that are on the korea servers i believe they're going to come out for this game uh so if you're playing the game and you, you want you see one of those classes they're excited don't worry they're going to be coming i think they said they're going to release them in two to three months increments but there are plenty of classes so don't be afraid to experiment when you create when you create a character you can save their if you want to save you know their look you can do that and then you can, don't be afraid to like make multiple classes and try them out they they let you preview the class the the advanced classes before you select your advanced class and if you progress the game and you don't like your advanced class don't like i said don't be afraid to um Go back, make a new character, and start playing the, like start playing different parts of the game again. Because I'll be real with you, I like I said, I've played the Berserker and I wanted to try something different. You can speed run the story, and as long as you do only the red pop up quests and the dark orange quests, you should be fine. Um, I played every dungeon on hard. I did everything, and I I don't do any side quests anymore. You can do straight story if that's what you want to do, or side quests, but. You, you can catch up in a matter of time. It's pretty simple. It's pretty easy. And it it's not hard to catch up at all. So don't be afraid to try out many different things. Um, now, the where what are like the short... You may say something like, what are some of the shortcomings of the game? Uh, well, I'll be, I'll be honest. Uh, it feels like after Lutera, even some of Lutera... The story writing is not so great. I'll be real with you. Story writing, eh. There's some pretty cool moments. There's some interesting stories. You know, some. You know, it may not be like the most captivating, but it's it. You know, it's it's there and it's interesting, and you can read it or you can choose not to. You can actually get a lot of the gist of what's going on just by skipping the dialogue and watching cutscenes, and just playing the game and reading what you're doing. It's pretty simple, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, the Island of Tortoik was a great one. I didn't even read any of the quests there because it's no longer the orange quest. It's now this blue quest. Uh, and all I did the entire time was uh, skip the skip the uh, skip the dialogue like I'm doing in here. And the reason I'm do the reason I do that is because you can get a lot of the idea of what's going on here. I'm fighting in a tournament. I'm new to Chengun and they know that I'm like the Sword of Lutera and I'm fighting in a tournament. Uh, so. 
you know. And there's also, uh, speaking of story, it made me, this hit me right there. Uh, there is altering choices, I guess. I'm not, I'm, look, I would be with you. I don't know how altering they are, but I've heard they, the, the, the way the game makes it seem is they're very altering. You can save people, you can, there's a, sometimes you'll get an option to press G or H and it'll be like, save this person or let them die. And you can choose. It's up to you. You don't, you don't have to obey what the game says you have to do. Um, but I can tell you from playing it, it is fun. When you are doing what the game is best at, questing is not what the game is best at. To be honest with you, you know, killing mobs and having fun and fighting bosses is where the game is best. And the questing tries to pace that as much as it can, but it can be mindless and you can, it'll, it'll feel at times where it's like, I don't really want to play. I don't want to do this quest. I don't care what this person has to say. It's okay. From what I've heard, you know, just push to the end game. End game. And at level 40, I've been doing that. And I'm having, a, I'm having a lot of fun. The dungeons are great. Uh, every, like, the storyline in certain areas are awesome. I get the concept. The overarching storyline is at least good. It's not like, you know, it's not like, you know, God of War or, like, something where it's just an entire story written game. It's just, you know, you're, you're progressing the game. You're doing things and you're seeing things happen. And if you don't like it, I, I, you know, you don't like it, but I recommend you at least give it a shot. And, uh, the game is extremely open to players. You can try it. Everything will be, will be there for you. Um, some of the game does not open up until later, but that's okay. When you hit level, when you round, when you hit 30 or you're getting, to, or if you're going to be like area specific, when you get to Lutera castle, a lot of the game will start to open up and it'll dump a lot on you at one time, but don't worry. That stuff is pretty easy to grasp. Some people, I guess, may struggle with engravings, but that's, you know, that's not that hard either. But I'm telling you, just give it a shot. Be open to the idea. Um, I know I explained a lot, but my review, if you want to give it like an out of a 10, so far alone with story and not even hitting the end game and ha being addicted and having a lot of fun as I am, I'd give it like a 8 out of 10. It's fun. It's 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 a lot of you know doing just you know whatever I want whenever I want in this game. You can do whatever you like to do, play how you want. And when you're ripping and tearing through mobs, I would already argue that it is a almost nine to ten out of ten game. It is so much fun, and and it feels rewarding at times. And sometimes you know it just feels like oh, I mean I did that. I don't but. Yeah, that's, that's all I had to say. Um, I know I missed yesterday's video. I talked about that on my Twitter. I was with family. But I'll let you know that I've been playing Lost Ark a lot. On stream, off stream. I've been playing it. And I don't regret it. And it's something that I think uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more of. I, I recommend that if, if you're interested in it, you usually at least give it a shot. But yeah, guys, um, that's all I had to say, and uh, thanks for watching. Peace.